and the growth and the expansion of your kingdom in the earth. You have established your kingdom in the earth. Call us out of darkness. We are part of your family. We are the kingdom of God that's in the earth today. And you are continually feeding through us life into the world that the world might know that Jesus is the Christ. You said in your word that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believe on him that is your son shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah. God, I see your purpose and I see your desires that's in your word and how you have so passionately redeemed us and brought us home to you, given us a place in your kingdom and you are continually and constantly unveiling our understanding so that we can extend, continue to grow and excel and expand. And God, we give you the praise and we give you all the glory. In the name of your son, Jesus, the, who is the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Well, you be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, good morning to everyone. What a, I'm, a, I'm really excited. I am. I'm always excited because of, uh, you know, just, just, just to being, being in the family of God, to me, is, is great. I, I just, I like being a family member. And, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just who I am. God made me this way. Uh, he's constantly feeding in and through me uh, his life, and so we're thankful for that. Uh, we're going to talk about life today. We're going to talk about the fact that life is a promise and what life is. You know, God is, God is, he is life. Jesus, you know, is that life. And, and, and I, I, I want us to, to think about these things. And, and think about them in a sense whereby God can, can infiltrate through your mind into your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because this life that we're talking about, uh, it, it's, it's, it's inside of us and it yeah. comes from God. It's eternal life. It's, it's life. Mm -hmm. It's life. And I, I, you know, God gave me a, a definition for life some time ago and I've shared this with you. And it, it, it's really wonderful because it, it, it really just takes all of the uh, misunderstanding and whatever out of it. But, but he's, it, it, it's very simple. He said, life is everything that's good. Everything. Well, you know, we, we, you know, and that's the, we, we be able to, we, we grasp these things with our natural minds because that's what we have in this earth. But, but the, our mind is not all that we have. But, but we have to start with our mind. So the mind understands good and bad. That was what we were warned against in the very beginning of, 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 of life. Uh, creation, God said, told, stay away from the tree of good and evil. Don't go near it. But, you know, we're a little, thick, we're a little slow. We did, and we went near it, and we partook, and we found out about good and bad. And uh, so my definition of life you know, from that point is everything that life is everything that's good. Now, everybody wants good. Everybody wants good. No, I don't know anybody wants bad unless you're just a quack. But everybody wants good. So life is everything that's good. That's what life is, everything that's good. And so uh, looking at the definition of life from that standpoint really just makes, very, makes it very simple and, and easy to grasp and to understand. And so, but, but I want us to talk about that life and, but this life, is, it goes beyond that. It just, it, 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 God is life. Yes. You know. But the life that God has uh, promised to us, it is a promise. That's my point. The, the point in this lesson is to help us to understand that the life, the, 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 the thing that we desire, what we call good, what we know as good, is, is, as good, is a promise from God. Yes. Now, the relationship that we have and the way we develop in our relationship with God is going to determine how much we believe God. Because it doesn't matter what God says or what he's promised. If you don't have any confidence in him, well, 
it's not going to be any good to you. You understand? So we, we have to have confidence. And we understand confidence. We understand confidence. You got, there are certain people that you know, you probably know, you probably know some people that you don't have a whole lot of confidence in. You know, they're a little, they're a little unstable. I mean, you know, yeah, say one thing and do another. And all that kind of, you don't have a lot of confidence in them. And then there may be people that you know that you do have great confidence in them. If they say something, you can, well, well, you can put your foot on it. Take it to the bank, so to speak, because so-and-so so said it. But uh, we, as we develop confidence in God, then we are more apt to believe him. And so uh, as a result of that, believing and, and learning how to believe God, God has made certain promises. And so if you have confidence in him, then the promises are going to become more real to you because they're going to be manifest in your life. Because the, the, the wonderful, the way that God interacts with us is by faith. You know the Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Remember that? So what is faith? What's that? Well, that's simply taking God at his word, believing what he says, right. and developing a lifestyle based on believing God's word. Amen. If God's a heal meet your needs, well, then you believe that, and your needs always be met. Amen. I was talking to Brother Shaw, and I was talking there this morning, and uh, I, I, I've lived long enough to be able to look back at a few days in the past, you know, and uh, I was looking back at my own life and looking back many, many, many years ago, looking at where I was, and, and it, didn't, I didn't, it didn't really look that good. I don't know anybody would, that would, would, would want my position at that time. It just didn't look promising. But then I looked at that kid that I looked back over my own life. I looked back at that kid at that time. And then I fast forwarded it and looked look at me now. Yeah. And the thought was, well, how did you get from there to here? And I thought, well, that's the life of God. That's what the life of God. It's interesting how people, you know, how we get frustrated in, when we are, you know, when we ever get frustrated. You know, we want God to do stuff and be hollering and oh God do this do that and it seems like he don't pay any attention at all <laughs> and you know you're just, you're just frustrated you're just, ah. you, you're just, just dealing with all kind of issues and stuff you know what I mean and you get and even you get to hollering and get to praying and oh God help and show up come on dear God I need you right now I need you right now but it, but it, but it doesn't, it doesn't it, it, like it, 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 it's, it's almost like he totally ignores you you know? But eventually, you know, you'll get out of it, you know. I know you did because you're sitting here. Amen. There's never been anything that you were in that you didn't get out of. Amen. Amen. Well, well, I'm trying to show you the difference between the way your mind works and the way faith works. When I was, we were sitting there talking this morning, and I looked at that kid that I saw many, many years ago, yeah, right. 60 plus years ago. And, and I'm looking at this kid, and I see this kid, and I'm looking at it, he don't look like much. You know. And, and if, and you'd have, if you would have saw him, you would have felt, felt, felt real sorry for him and bought him some candy or something. But God didn't buy him no candy. He acted like he wasn't even there. But then I fast forwarded. From then to now, and I look at it, and I'm like, whoa, whoa. Well, that's what life will do. That's life. See, the life was given to me. It was then, but it didn't look like it. Well, you know, God has his principles, and he's not going to change his principles and his rules for nobody. Well, even at that time, his principles was and his rule was, don't look at what you see. Because what you see is temporary. So don't get focused. So if, you'd have, if, if, if all of the focus of heaven would have been on that kid, look at him, look at, look at that little beautiful poor kid there. Look at him. He's just, he's just nothing. His daddy's dead. He's just left there. 
pitiful little fella. But God didn't even pay attention. It looked like he is a, he wasn't even on the scene doing that, all that pitiful talking. You, you follow what I'm saying? So, but, but, and that's the way life is. You, you, now, now you are. Uh, now you aren't, now you are. You weren't, now you are. It, whoa, whoa. Life is working. Faith is working all the time. And you, I am not all that I'm going to be. Amen. The same life that brought me from there to here is going to take me from here on. Life. And it's a promise from God. And the life that I'm talking about is through his son, Jesus Christ. It's, 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 a, it's wonderful how God has orchestrated this thing. And don't, don't ever look at yourself and, 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 and think small of yourself. Because there's things that's working on your, for, on your behalf that your mind knows absolutely nothing about. There are people in your ancestry that has contributed to where you are now. That you don't even know anything about it. But the faith and the life of God was working all along. And you didn't even see it and didn't know it. You didn't even know it was working. See. That's, what, that's the way the life of God. God doesn't have to show off. He don't show up just to prove to you that he got you. Mm. He's not going to thunder, you know what I mean? And he's not going to, you know what I mean? I know, I know there, there's, several, there's a several times that he did that, and it was, it was for his son, but you couldn't do what, you, you, you could never have done what his son did. I remember one day God showed up out there, and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Wow, they thought it thundered. Oh, God, who is that? Where did it come from? Yeah. yeah. But you and I are the, are the results of all that Jesus has done. So he, he don't, there's no need for that. Now he just, he just he's out there working. Mm. God is a spirit. Yes. And there's activities going on in the spirit world all the time. And there's activities going on on your behalf when you are asleep and you know nothing about it. Constantly. That's the life that we're talking about, the life of God. And I love, oh, I, I am so, I just love God. He, he doesn't even show, you don't even know where it comes from. Your head don't even know. There's times that God has issued things out, has made, has fulfilled uh, orders for your life and issued things out, and you receive them, and he never showed up. You don't know who, it was always seemed like to have been anonymous. Who did that? How did that happen? Who, 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 what? Who did that? Who told him to do that for me? And it just goes on. Oh God, I'm, I, I have, I've, I've come to a point in my life where God is just, you know, as you learn about these things, you become, you, you're more conscious of them when you see them happen. And, and the things that, the blessings that I receive from the Father, and, and I'm, I'm identifying them more and more, it's just absolutely, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And, but you know what? As, as wonderful as it gets, God still doesn't say, go, ta-da. You would think after a while he was just so, ta-da. Oh, there he is. No, 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 he just likes to, he likes to, and he, he watch you. It's like, you know, the Bible talks about some of the citizens of faith, we are God's garden. Yeah. You ever go out and look at your garden, and you look at how, wow, I have, I planted some tomatoes this year. I, I do, you, I usually do it. Yeah. I got a little spot out back there, I just threw a couple plants, a few plants of tomatoes out there. I got tricked this year. I don't care about it. Plum tomatoes. What they call them? Plum tomatoes. A little. Yeah. I got tricked. They had the wrong sign on those things. You know, it's supposed to be the big, nice beef steaks. And I said, 
And, I, and they started coming. I see the soil. I said, wow, wow, boy, I'm going to have a crop this year. And the vine covered, it looked like a grapevine. I said, I'm like, wow, man. But then I thought, them, I said, they're awful small. And then I went the other day, and they started to turn red. I said, whoa, y'all don't get no bigger. I got tripped. I don't know how. I think they put the wrong sign on those things. When I bought the slips, you know, you buy the slips of this. And I think they put the wrong sign on them. I don't care for plum tomatoes. <laughs> I want the big beefsteaks. I want the big fat ones. And I didn't get them. I got the, yeah, I got the wrong thing. But I'm watching them grow. And fr I'm watching them. And I'm watching them. I'm enjoying watching them grow. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? But they grew. But I, get, I got the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but God, we are God's garden. Yes. And God see us. Yes. And he rejoice in yes. us. When he see you, this is my beloved son. And I know that's the way he feels because that's the way he, he said that about his son. He said that about his son, Jesus. And so I know how he feels about me because he feels about me the same way he feels about Jesus. Because I'm in him. And so the very thing that so he says about his son, Jesus, he says it about me. And so I know this. So I know I am his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. Yes. I'm his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. And so I, so I know that. And so it, it's an encouragement. It's an encouragement to me. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle, of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life mm -hmm. which is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. According to the promise of life. Now, life is a promise. The life that you are living is a life that was given to you from God. If you are in Christ, you are in the life arena yes, sir. where you belong, you, you, knowing that. Now, let me reemphasize re this. Faith is knowing. And the way you know is by what you hear. Mm. Faith come by hearing. You hear the word of God, and then you hear it until faith come, and when faith come, you know what God says, and when you know it, it's a working reality in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, we have an adversary, and, and it's, we got him, whether we want him or not. God says over in, second, over in first Peter, he says, be vigilant, be watchful. Because your adversary, the devil, your adversary, your adversary, you have an adversary. Uh -huh. See, this life does not come without adversity. Yes, right. Amen. The adversity is not a part of the life package itself. The adversity comes from the evil one mm -hmm. who is trying to separate you from the promise yes. that God has made to you. Yes. And so everything that's negative in your life, you know, something as simple, you ever, you ever wake up in the morning and your mind is just bombarded, oh dear God, you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you shouldn't have said that and you shouldn't have said that and God's mad at you and this ain't going working for you and this ain't going to work for you and you didn't want to say up there and every day you feel, oh, I feel so bad, dear God, why? Well. That is your adversary. The thing that delivers you out of that is when you know certain things. Uh -huh. When I know that I am what I am by the grace of God, I am not what I am because of me, what I did, or whether I dotted every I and crossed every T. That's not what makes me what I am. I am what I am because I'm in the life flow, because life is in Jesus Christ. God has promised it to me, and I, am, I know that. I know that God said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creator. And so when I know things, I treat all of that stuff that the devil bring like, a, like water running off a duck's back. I just, it, just, it, just, it comes and it, it passes. 
Now, I thought this one, I, died. I was just telling Brother, Brother Shaw, we were talking about this this morning, and I said, you know, one of the things that I do, and you can take it if you want to, works for me, and the devil get here just just bumble. Particularly, I don't know why he likes to come around in the morning. <laughs> Want to catch you before you get out to bed. Right. Want to catch you, hey, hey, you, you know, you really didn't do this, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll do, I'll bust out and go to laughing. <laughs> now, I don't feel like laughing. But I'll just bust out and go to laughing. Then he look, he buck his old eyes and he look. Like, what are you laughing about? Yeah. Well, I'm laughing at you. What are you laughing at me for? Because you're ignorant yeah. and you're stupid. <laughs> and, you, and your end is not too far off. Yeah. You're going to the pit. Yes, sir. Well, he'll, he'll leave quick because he don't want to hear about that because that's exactly where he's going. Yes, sir. I know that too. I got that from God. Yeah. He's going to the pit. So my point is that you, know, that's just, you just laugh at him yeah. Yeah. because God has already said, see, number one, there's no pressure ever on you. As long as you are in Christ, there's never any pressure on you. There's, uh, put it, let me put it this way. There's no required pressure on you. Now, you're going to allow the pressure to be on you because that's what he come to do. But because, see, God has already forewarned you that you have an adversary. And he's already forewarned you to be vigilant and to be watchful because your, not mine, yours, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He is called the accuser of the brethren. He, is the accu he accuses God's kids of not being good kids. That's right. Like what difference does it make to him? He's not interested in whether you was good, bad, or indifferent. He's interested in depressing you yes. and in robbing you of the life that God has promised to you. Yes. See, life is a gift and it's a promise from God. God so, listen, 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 God so what? Loved the world that he did what? Gave what? His only begotten son that whosoever, I am a whosoever. Believe on him. Notice he didn't, he didn't put no great task on you. I love, see, that's a good God. There's no, he said, well, you got to kill two lions and a bear. Don't break the skin on the bear. Just kill him without breaking the skin. You know, he didn't give us no great task like that. No, believe on his son and you have eternal life. And eternal life is life from now on. On. I will never die. I will Amen. never die. Amen. Wow. Amen. I will never die. The only thing I will do is transition. I will change bodies. But I am alive forevermore. That's what eternal life is. It's from God. He's the only one who can give you that. And I will never die. And the life that I now live in the flesh is really low compared to what I'm going to live when I get my other one. Wow. I know that because that's the promise that the Father has given to me. And we're going to, we're going to talk about it and we're going to show you where the promises of God cannot fail Amen. because he is the one that made them. And so... Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, underline that because that's, a, that's important. It's, under, it's important to know that this life that I have, number one, it's a gift, and I'm not, and I'm not the one that's responsible, that's responsible for, for, for giving it out. It's, it's not, I'm, I'm, I, I, I have this just by being here. Yeah. It's the life is where? In Christ Jesus. Yes. Now, now remember now the, the, the great scripture that we always quote, 1 second, 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 second Corinthians 5, 20, uh, 17. If any man be where? Wow. What is he? We have heard that a lot of time, have a long time. Well, you just keep, you keep it. You never know, it, 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 notice it never changes. Just because you've been quoting it for the last 35 years, that, that he did, he's not going to change it. Because every time you say it, it reinforces yeah. the life. Yeah. 
How many times have you heard your name? Why don't you just go ahead and change it? So I've been calling me that for, for the last 75 years. Why don't I just give me another one? You just keep the same name. It's, it's locked in. You, you, you're more apt. You, 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 you just hear it. You know, you call a dog a name a long time after uh, long enough, he'll answer. He will. He will. You call him. You, you, you get to call him. Now, the first time you call him, he won't answer. But you keep calling him. You keep calling him. Hey, Spot. Spot. After a while, Spot goes. He's going to say, Spot, he goes. Well, faith come by hearing. Yeah. Well, 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 God, because of who we are, you see, we believe what he says. You see, he is the one that has promised us this wonderful life. And then you hear it and then you believe that. Now, Titus chapter 1, look at, look at verse 1 and 2 of Titus. Titus 1, 1 and 2. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. According to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness. Boy, that's a mouthful. Verse 2 says, in hope of eternal life. Well, why am, I, why am I in hope of that? Because it's been promised to me. Rest of that, watch this. Re, re, let's read on. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot, oh God, it just gets better every time you go, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. You know, the word of God is good. You know, I, I, you know what saddens me? Here's what saddens me. It saddens me that the devil keep people so preoccupied and distracted that they cannot hear what we're hearing here. That, 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 I'm so, that saddens me when I see that. Yeah. I was, uh, I was over in the shop right yesterday. And I'm walking through there just, you know, just kicking about doing what I always do. That's right. And, and I, and I stumbled across this lady in there, and she was an older lady, and there wasn't a smile nowhere near her, you know what I mean? And, and she, I could look, I, saw, I could see the fear on her. Almost, it almost made me break her, almost made me like I wanted to cry. I thought, dear God, she was just, you could, she, you know, you ever see someone that's fearful and timid? And I thought, dear God, and, and, I, and, I, and I tried to say something, you know what I mean, trying to, I tried to say something to break through, yeah. and, and she didn't hear a word, she didn't, I thought, God. So I just, I just walked away. You know, but, and I knew, I knew it was, I know what it was. She was just. I'm most locked in in a fear. Wow. And I thought, your God doesn't like to see kids, people like that. I don't like to see people like that. But we have an adversary. Yeah. And, but the thing that gets me is that the church, Come on, talk. people that are connected to the church, is so preoccupied. That they just can't, it's like the things of God doesn't really matter. It's a devil trick. It's a devil trick. I, I, you know, you, 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 you know, you can't, you know, I, I, would, I would rather not live at all Amen. on this earth any longer than to live and bound up in fear. I, I, I really wouldn't. But there are so many that are that's just, I don't, I don't know. But, but, and and that's, what, that's, what, that's what motivates me. It's one of the things that motivates me. I just want to help people. I just want to, I just want to help people. I just want to love people. I just want to, I want to help because that's what God has given this life that he has placed in me is the life that the whole world needs. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. I, and I, you know, even, even, even when I look at, when I look at, when I look at, 
politics and I look at, I look at the politicians and I look at the, 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 the leaders, what we call great leaders of the world, and, and, and the issues are, are talked about, but yet there seem to, seem to be some idea that I'm, we're going to fix this. Mm. You're not. No, no, you're not. No, no you're not. No. You're not going to fix it. Because if you can fix this, then Jesus was wasting his time on Calvary. Amen. You can't fix anything. No. And we, 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 we seem to have, you know, and I see this, and I, and, almost, and I said, dear God, help us. And when I look at the word of God and the liberty yes. that's here in this book, that's what it's, the Bible is called the perfect law of liberty. Yes. There is no reason for anybody to be bound in this world's circumstances. Amen. God has liberated us. Jesus came to this earth yes. and liberated us. Yes. The life that's in Christ Jesus is our liberty. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, if any man, if you, who, if you abide in me, oh, continue yeah. in my word, mm -hmm. you will what? Know the, the truth. And what will the truth do? Free. That's liberty. That's liberty. Develop yourself in heavenly language. Yes, sir. Stop listening to earth language. Amen. Develop yourself. Jesus, watch this. Here's a typical illustration of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Verse, this is just 53rd verse of, of the Gospel of John. 53rd verse of John 6. John 6. Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man mm. and drink his blood, guess what? You have no life, no life. in you. Do you see that? Now, what are you going to do with that? You think, man, this man talking about cannibalism. But no, he's not talking about cannibalism. No, that's not earth language. Amen. That is not earth language. That's not earth language that he's using. You, you, see, you, you see what we're talking about? Say, the, the life of God is not of this world. Amen. And if all you know is earth language, you will miss God. Amen. You'll miss him. You will mi if all you know is earth language, you will miss God. Yes, sir. You'll miss him. We're going to have to learn to, and adapt to heavenly language. Heavenly language. Mm -hmm. Heavenly language. Amen. Heavenly language. Amen. Most assuredly I say to you, mm -hmm. unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. Come on, what? Now, now, now I, I, I shared that. To help us to understand, see the difference between earth language. Now, they got just, they got really been out of shape with Jesus. They, they couldn't handle that. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't handle that. They couldn't handle that. And they just, that's, when that, that's the same, that's around, later on they left him. They said, I don't know what you're talking about. But here's the thing, here's the thing that you, that you, that you, that you see. Jesus didn't stop. Just because they didn't understand. He didn't come there and say, okay, let me bring him in. Let me go back there and talk earth language. See, there's a heavenly language and there's an earthly language. And Jesus did not say, oh, they don't understand, so I'm going to go back there and talk earthly language. You know, people want you to talk regular to them. Now, they, really what they're saying, they want you to talk earth language. They want you to talk, they want to talk flesh, earth language. And that's what gets us in trouble. 
No, no. This life that we're talking about is not of this world. Amen. The life that we're talking about here is in Christ Jesus. Amen. See, notice what the Bible says. See, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Mm. Now, over in Colossians, remember what God said? Set your mind on things above. Yes. Not on things on the earth. Do you know, see, you're not going to have two people talking heavenly language and in disagreement. No. You're going to only see, this, you're going to only see fra fractions when there's one in earth talking earthly language and nothing talking heavenly language. Amen. Wow. And the trick that the devil does is they can be so close together that you can only, you can only know this, you can only know by revelation. Mm -hmm. You can only know by the spirit. You can't know by your head. Hey. You will never see Jesus and God arguing. That's right. You will never see that. Because they are one. You should never, there's two believers arguing. There no, should be no such thing as that. If, if, if two believers is arguing, somebody is, is, is out of, out of, out of soul. You will never see God and the Holy Spirit arguing. Tell him, well, I don't see it that way. That is, earth, that is flesh language. Mm. But I just don't see it that way. You, what do you, what, 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 you got in to see with? <laughs> you, you understand? And, and, I, and, I, and I said this because it, I know it sounds radical, but it will help us. Yes. It will help us. Yes. There is no division in heaven. No, that's right. There's no division in heaven. The only time you will see division is when, when heaven and earth clash. Where there's a clash between the life of God and the, and, the, and the existence on this earth. That's the only time you'll see a clash. Jesus, and, I, and I'm fast forwarding over there because it's, it's, a, it's a perfect verse there that, that help people to, to help you to understand. You know what I mean? When Jesus was talking about, well, well, well I'll go ahead and read some of this. Jesus is talking about, you know what I mean, uh, th this life that, you know, he is the life. Uh, let me pick up it as John 6, 44 through 53. No, no one can come to me except the Father who sent me draws him. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. You just can't. You ever try to talk somebody into getting saved? I have. Didn't work. I talked to one guy one day. I just talked to him until I turned. Can you imagine me turning blue in the face? I talked to him, I just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. And I, and I thought I had him going. And I talked. And then he was asking questions. And, all, and then, I, and then and he looked at me and I like, that, that's all you, that's all to it? And I said, yeah. He just turned and walked away. He just turned and walked, he just, he just, just turned and walked away. You can't talk anybody into truth. You can't talk anybody into believing anything. Not only, that, not to get, not only just getting saved. You, you, you might have a, a revelation about something and try to tell it to somebody else. Another Christian. Right. They don't hear a word you're saying. That's right. I never forget one time. I, I remember way back in the early days. My early days. When I, got, I, got real, I was real fired up about the things of God. This is way, 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 way back. Way back. I was over at community church. Just before you got there, I think. Yeah. It was way back. Back in the 70s. Uh -huh. You know. And uh, I know I got some, God, I was getting a little revelation here and there, and I'm, I'm excited. This was back in the days of the cassette player. Anybody remember that little flat 9 by 12 cassette player we used to have? I guess about a 6 by, yeah, about a, yeah, had little buttons on it saying that. And put one cassette in it, and you could listen. That's what I had. And I had some good word on a tape I got from somewhere. And, man, that thing had lit my fire. And I took it to the church with me. I said, I'm, I know, boy, I dear God, I was, we was at the BTU. I said, I'm going to take it out here that we're going to have a glory, a whole a hallelujah time this evening. Because I know they're going to, they, when they hear this, and I plugged it in. After we got settled at the preliminaries, I plugged her in, boy. 
And I'm listening and jumping up and down inside and looking at them, waiting for them to jump. Uh, they did everything but yawn. I thought, God, what's with this? How can I hear what I'm hearing? And they said, you yawn. Like, hurry up when you get time with that. And it was about like that, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they, they were, they, they were, they were a little more respectful. I don't think they really opened their mouth and yawn. But, uh, but, 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 but my point was, they didn't hear a word. Well, that's all they did was hear was words. But they, they got no revelation, they didn't get no, but I, I couldn't figure that when I, that was a, I didn't know much, very little then. And I couldn't figure, why I don't, they, why can't they hear? And we finished the lunch, right? We were going through a little commentary there, and they, they didn't hear it. I learned something. You can't make folks. You can't make, here, this was, watch this, here it is, here it is right here. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. You remember when Jesus said to Peter, who do men, he said to the disciples, who do men say that I am? Jesus said, Peter said, you're the Christ, yes. the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't tell you that. You didn't get that in the schoolhouse. You, you, you didn't, no, no man told you that. But my father revealed that to you. It's revelation. That's what's called revelation. That's why you can't talk people into stuff. Now, 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 you can't talk an unbeliever into being saved. Now, watch this. This goes a step further. You can't talk another believer into, into a revelation that you may have. Amen. You can't talk them into it. You can tell them, but they don't hear you. It has to be a revelation. It has to be a revelation. Just because you know, they can, you can't make them, know, even though they may be a believer. You see, you, you, try to, you try to tell them, well, can't you see this? No, they can't. See, God is the revealer of truth. And you can't, you can't make people hear it. You can, and that's why people get all bent out of shape and get all, and then get frustrated. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, you, 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 you can't hear what you can't hear. That's just like you can, if you can't see something, you can't see. You know, if somebody turn the lights off, you can't see. You know. But, but my point is that God is saying, no, the Father has to draw you. The Father has to be you. Over there in 1 Corinthians, the Bible says, no, no one can call Jesus Lord except by the Spirit. It's the spirit that gives life. It's the spirit. It's the spirit. Now, Jesus was talking about this life right here, right on through, right on down, bring up first four to five. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. See, notice there? You heard from the Father. You know, not something you, 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 something you come up with. George didn't tell you that. Amen. You know, jo George didn't tell you. No, 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 you didn't come because George told you. The only reason you come is because Jesus, God, Jesus. the Spirit of God, got to tell you. Yeah. See, look, it, it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Uh -huh. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Amen. You ain't coming without the God, because God opening your understanding. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has yeah. everlasting life. Mm. See that? See, look at the simplicity of that. Look at how easy. Did you know God treats us like children? Amen. You know, do you, do you make things hard for your kids? No, no you don't. God does not make things hard for his kids. But, but yet, you know, we'll say, oh, they're so hard. Man, it's ha, tough. But uh, because you make it that way. God don't make it that way. God loves his children. Why would, you, why would you go make things tough for your kids? You wouldn't do that. Well, God doesn't make things tough for you. If you are missing something, that's your fault. Just stand still and listen to God. 
and develop and grow, 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 grow so he can, he can talk to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. You have it. You have it. God said that. You what? You believe in what? Jesus. And you have everlasting life. Now, verse 48. I am the bread of life. I am the bread. Now, this is not earthly language. I am the bread. Now, see, now, what? If you don't think, if you if you think it's earthly language, wait a few minutes. Now, they just had to listen. They 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 they're getting full. They they get this. You know, they never have about much of this they can have because it just getting, every time he says something, it just gets worse and worse. He said, "Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which come down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die." Man, you can feel it. They, they must have got to be about this big by now. They're about to hit the bus. Because they, don't have, they have no idea what he's talking about. Well, the reason that they don't have no idea what he's talking about, because this is not earth language. This is not earth language. That's why God has such an affection on things above. Not on things on earth. Earth language is death language. If you're trying to live life, if you're trying to live life, if you're trying to access life and live peaceably and happy every day with earth language, you better get another thing coming. It's never going to happen. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to understand, you're going to receive revelation from God, or you're going to live a defeated life. Because there is no division in God. And if you've if you, if, 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 if you got a problem, it's because of your lack of understanding. See? Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Boy, they're they really looking now. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh. I can see them. They, they just say, oh, whoa, 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 stop. I mean, you gotta imagine. You can, I can just imagine that crowd. I mean, they are squirming and mingling and like, whoa. And now, now, now they say, what? What? He, Which I shall give for the life of the world. If you can, I, I, I can picture that crowd right now. Now, watch this. Now they break loose. They can't take this no more. The Jews, therefore, quarrel. Among them say a sin. How can this man give us his flesh? See, how can he do that? Can you see? Can you imagine the frustration in them? You know why? You know why they're frustrated? Because they don't understand. This is not the and language that he is speaking is not language of this world. It's not language of this world. And that is one of the problems that we have. That's one of the things that hinders us today. When we, we will read the letter. And it will mess us up. Yes. And then we get, we, get, we get all out of salt. Mm -hmm. Anytime that you are out of salt, you are out of the will of God. And, and out of the word of it, you don't understand the word of God. Yes. Because Jesus was not out, out, ever out of salt. He is speaking in heavenly language, yes. but they didn't understand it. And he, and, but, but, but here's what I want you to see. Look at verse 53. He does not say, okay, guys, you guys just don't understand what I'm saying. Let me see if I can explain it to you. He doesn't do that. Now, this is something to learn. Listen to me real carefully. If you're trying to water the word of God down for people to understand it, don't, don't waste your time. Amen. Amen. Because usually when people are in friction, they have already decided what they're going to believe anyway. Amen. They've already decided. I don't care who it is. You, me, anybody. You've already decided what you're going to. And so, 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 so just changing the format or even the whatever to try to bring it down so they can understand it is a waste of time. Jesus did not do that. Because if you look at the 53rd verse, it gets worse. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. They say, oh, done, 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 done. 
I'm out of here. I am out of here. I am out of here. If you read further on, they left. They left. They got out of there. They, they, they left. They, they left. They, 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 they couldn't take that no more. <laughs> Can you imagine that? They could. Ooh, what? What? My, I, I tell you, I learned something from Jesus. Yes, sir. Jesus does not get upset and try to change the standards of his word on, just because people don't understand. And that's a good lesson for us to learn. Amen. Don't try, because people will, people will, people, see, people, revelation comes from God, not from, not, you can't make people understand. No. You cannot make people understand. Revelation comes from God. God. Now, there's plenty of stuff that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But God gave me enough sense for this one thing. If I don't understand, I just leave it alone. Because I know I understand enough to keep me busy. Rather than sit up all night worrying about something that I don't understand. No, really. That's it. But to me, that's what I do. Because it's a waste of time anyway. And there's plenty of stuff I don't understand. There's plenty I don't understand. But I don't say I don't say but not over it. I understand enough to keep me busy. Until I learn about, learn about the stuff that I don't understand. Yeah, you know, you know, cause, yeah, and, and we have to, and see, that's wisdom within itself. That's godly wisdom. That's wisdom from above to understand it. Because, you know, we're growing. Yes. We're growing. Jesus. We're growing. But, but don't ever, if you allow yourself to be divided, because that's what the, see, the devil says, divide and conquer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Don't allow that. Because he, if, he can, if he can divide you Come on, because of your lack of understanding on, or you understand thinking you know something, thinking you don't know, you know no, no. See, see, watch this. If I understand, fine. I understand. Mm -hmm. I just leave it alone. I, learn, I got this. Put it on the shelf until I grow up to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I just, I just put it on the shelf until I grow up to it. Because, listen, there's enough stuff that I understand mm -hmm. to keep me busy. Until I learn what I don't understand. You follow me? You know what I mean? So, so I just stay about my business doing, and I know what God has called me to do, and the calling that he's placed on my life, and the ministry that he's given unto me. You know what I mean? I don't know. They're, they're planning about this ministry I don't know nothing about, but ministry, pastoring, the planning stuff I don't know nothing about. But I know enough about pastoring to do, to keep me busy until I learn about the stuff that I don't know about. Yeah. So I just stay busy doing the stuff that I do know. Come on. I just stay busy doing the stuff that I do know. Yeah. And that way I don't have to worry about it. No. You, you follow what I'm saying? Amen. You know what I mean? That's just godly understanding. Yeah. You know I mean? We are growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this life that we're is a God it's a good life. Yes. It's a wonderful life. And we are called to do what? Number one, to receive this life. Mm. And then secondly, to distribute this life. Freely we receive and freely we give. We receive and we're given. We're, 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 we're like a conduit. Did you know running water is living water? Did you ever see water in a, in a, in a lake? It just does, it does, it nothing comes in, nothing goes out. Guess what? I bet you she's green. I bet you she's full of algae. I wouldn't drink it if I were you. Really wouldn't drink it. But you go down to the brook where water is running. Nice fresh water running. You can hear it rippling across the rocks. Probably can drink some of that. You follow what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's moving. It's, it's moving. It's, it's constant. There's life in it. There's life in it. It's moving. It's moving. The life of God that's in you. The life of God that's in you. You receive, freely you receive, freely you give, freely you receive, freely you give. God is coming into you. God teaches you things, and then you give them to others. That's what we are, we are called to do that. So Titus says, 
Back to Titus 1, 1, 1 and 2. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Now, God is the promiser. He made this promise. That's right. Deuteronomy 30, 15, God says, See? Look, he said, look, watch it. See, I have done what? Set before you today life and good, death and evil. Which one do you want? See, I told you life, I made it, you know, God showed, showed me how to make it simple and easy. He said, life is good, death is bad. Death is bad, life is good. God said, I have set before you today. Now, now think about that. Think about that. If God sits life before you, right. why would you choose death? Mm. The only reason you would do that would be, a, would be a, 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 because of ignorance. You wouldn't recognize it. Mm -hmm. And the devil will come in, and the devil will make, he will make death look like life and make life look like death. If, you, if all you're looking at is earthly, earthly things, he will make death look like life and make life look like death. And somebody, I remember, see, I remember back in the days, you know, we used to talk about talking to people about being a Christian. And they'd say, you know, well, you know, it's all there. You can't do nothing. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard that one or not. Well, you know, it's, you, well, you can't do it. You can't have no fun. The devil told me that. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I found out. I said, that, boy, he's really bad. I was a kid. I remember, I remember I was a kid. The devil told me that. I, want, I was a little kid mm -hmm. running around on the farm. Yeah. And I wanted to live for God because I'm brought up in church, you know what I mean? And I had made it up in my mind. Yes. You know, just a, just a toddler running around. Mm -hmm. And I thought, dear God, I want to live for God. I want to give my whole life to God. I was thinking like that. I want to give my life to God. And, it, and I didn't know it was the devil. Showed up. He said, man, you can't do that. Say, so you ain't done nothing. You ain't had no fun. You ain't done nothing. <laughs> now, I didn't know it was the devil. But I thought, later on, I thought, yeah. you know, anything, anybody would take a little kid and tell a little kid somebody like that, he need to go to jail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, he, he told me that. And, and, and so I said, no, you, 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 you can't do it. Because I wanted to. I wanted to live for God. I said, I wanted to give my whole life to yeah. God. I wanted to, and that devil said, you can't do that. But the bad thing, I didn't, number one, I didn't know it was the devil. And he talked me out of that. Mm. You know, just talking to me. said, yeah, you, you, you go, go. And I thought about that in the later years. I thought, dear God, anybody that would do a kid like that, dear God, he needs to go to jail. Yes, sir. But he did that to me. Well, he's still doing it to people today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God set light before him, and people, they think it's death. They tell well, you can't have, you can't do it, you can't have nothing. And then he set death before him, and then they think that's life. Well, I'm going to get me a good job, make me a lot of money, and I'm going to do this out of there, yeah, yeah. That's the, they think that's life. Poor fool. No, no. God says, see, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. Then skip down to the 19th verse. He echoes it again. I called, now he get witnesses to prove that he's done this. What is God doing? He is a confirming and helping us to understand that he, has, he is in our corner. He wants the best for us. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Yeah. Therefore, choose life. Now, now, you can't miss this. This is what I call an open book test. He, he says it before us and then tell us what to choose. Now, come on, how can you beat that? Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. You see that? Now, you got to see all of these as promises of God. Uh 
And we'll, we'll, they will get deeper in this as we go on. These are the promises of God. And so now, now faith starts showing up. Faith starts coming because you get, you get to hearing this. Now, take, take this on. You know, he said, choose life that both you and your descendants. Whoa, stop. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Not only am I blessed but now my kids are going to get it now I, I read I found out about my, my grandfather my grandfather was, a, was, a, was quite a man I found out about him in the later years and it was, a quite, it was quite a blessing on my grandfather's life and then I thought dear God no wonder I'm blessed so remember I said to you earlier on today, there are people that has deposited in your life that oh, you never even met. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Jesus. There are people that have made deposits in your life that you've never even met. You'll find out about them when you get to heaven, when you get up there with Jesus. You can, you'll meet them, get, a shake, get, on, shake, get down and shake hands with them. If they shake hands, I don't know if they shake hands in heaven or not. I don't know. But I know they're pretty intimate because, it's, because they but one up there. There ain't but one up there, you know. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Mm. And if you're up there, you're one with the Father. Oh, so there ain't but one up there. Yeah. So there's great intimacy in heaven. Oh, I know great, that. Great, yeah. Great. But my point in this, and this can, see, this can be an encouragement to you. Your descendants uh -huh. are, will reap the same blessing on. that's on you. Because, see, look at the word. See, this is what the word says. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that or so that both you and your descendants may live. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stop sitting up at night worrying about your kids. Oh, I don't want to try to get Junior saved. Dear Lord, who oh, please save Junior. Oh, God, please save Junior. Come on, I know he's acting crazy, but can you get in there and save him? The blessing that's on you rests on Junior. Amen. I look at my grandkids. I do. I, I, I look at I watch my grandkids. I watch them. I watch them. They're, they're brilliant. They're blessed. blessed. But they can't have it. Amen. The blessings have been coming down, next, coming down the bloodline all these years, coming down the line. My granddaddy yes, sir. was blessed. Amen. My father. Yes, sir. See? Yes. Me. Right. My children. Yes. My descendants. Because I chose life. And it reinforced the blessing that's coming down the pipe. Do, do you see the peace that you can have? See, 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 not only do you have peace for yourself, but you ain't got to worry about your kids. Yeah, your grandkids. The blessing, it's a, it's a, it's a promise. It's a, it's a promise from God. It's a promise from God. All you got to do is say, well, yeah, well, God, well, and then we didn't get to the good, the good, well, there's all that's good. But, I, but we're going to talk about the, the part why the God guarantees that if he says it, bless God, it's impossible for it not to come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. If it goes out of his mouth, it's impossible for it not to come to pass. Thank you, there's not a lot of stuff impossible with God. Amen. There's a few things. He, come on, he can't lie. Mm. It's impossible for him to lie. And it's an utter guarantee if the word goes out of his mouth, it will not return void. See, that's what gives you the assurance. And this is what gives you an anchor when the devil is kicking up dust. <laughs> you can kick up all the dust you want. I'm a winner. I can't lose. It's all the dust, that, all the dust that's going on. It's dusty right now. But I see clearly. It's dusty right now, but I see clearly. Why? God has spoken. Let the church say amen. amen. God has spoken. Amen. 
Let the church say amen. amen. God has spoken. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Father, we give thanks unto you today. Hallelujah. Thank you for the wonderful life you have given unto us through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have sent us your Son. And through Jesus we have everlasting life. God, I thank you for that. The life that you've given to us, yes. we hand it off. Yes. We go and fulfill the calling and purpose yes. that you've yes. placed in us. We purpose in our hearts to love one another, yes. to be kind to one another, yes. to be tender-hearted, yes. to forgive one another yes. as God in Christ has forgiven us. God, we bless you, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Amen.